The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After Jesus was baptized, the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. The commentary at the beginning of Mass mentioned the fact that this was a short gospel. Isn't that awesome? In the seminary, they taught us short, uh, long gospel, short homily. Short gospel, long homily. And on top of the fact that it's Lent, so we're called to suffer a little bit, right? So, thus we suffer. Um, I'm sure that many of you have been watching the Olympics. Uh, I think Poland got their first gold medal yesterday, a ski jumper. Canada's been doing very, very well. I think we're at 15, 16 medals, uh, gold, silver, bronze, doing very well. And uh, as these athletes, you know, we get to know who they are, and the events that they're a part of, whether they're from Canada or not, we get to realize all the hard work and the training these athletes go through just to get to the Olympics, let alone achieve any medals. The countless hours each day, uh, the days, the weeks, the months, even the years of training, of discipline, of exercise, of sacrificing, kind of maybe even having some fun or relaxing for the sake of competing with some of the events, depending on what sport, only for a few minutes to try to be their very, very best. And so they've had intense training to be able to be on this world stage. Well, for us, we now, this past Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, started our Lenten journey. We can view it as our training season. The opportunity for us to change our ways, change our habits, and to turn away from those things that take us away from God and His love, and to embrace new habits, new opportunities, new practices to draw closer to God. St. Ignatius said that we're, we're either, in whatever we do, we're either going towards God or going away from Him. There's kind of, there's no middle seat. There's no sitting in the pew saying, everything's great, I don't have to do anything. We're either going one way or the other. And Lent is a reminder for us to come back to the Lord to take a look at the pathways and our activities and the things that we spend time on. Are they truly making us better? Making us stronger disciples or followers of the Lord? Or are they taking away? Are they causing division, pain or suffering in our lives or for the lives of others? You know, Lent, you know, on Ash Wednesday, we got marked on our foreheads with ashes and the words, repent, and believe in the gospel. We're called to turn away from sin. And Lent is like Jesus in the gospel, who after being baptized went into the desert. He went into his 40 days of strengthening. And in that strengthening, he was tempted by the devil, consoled by the angels of the Father in heaven. But then after going through that time in the desert, away from a lot of distractions, allowed to focus in, and discern and divide the good versus the temptations, he came out being able to proclaim the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. He began his public ministry of proclaiming God's love. And for us, this Lenten season is a calling back to our mission to be filled up with God's love for the sake of proclaiming the good news. Not just for us to feel good or to be good, but to be Christ in this world 
to proclaim in our words, but most especially in our actions, God's everlasting love. And that's how we celebrate the gift of Easter. That's how we celebrate the joy of the resurrection that is in our hearts. And it changes what we do and what we say. Now, for the athletes, did, did they love waking up at 5 in the morning and training for three hours before they went to work or did all these other things with their families? Of course not. It was a struggle. Going into training uh, takes discipline and it's hard. But what is our goal? Our goal is not just to come to church on Easter Sunday and say Jesus is risen, have breakfast and dinner with family and just move on with our lives. If it is, if that's our perspective of Easter, we're in big trouble. Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord that begins now and dwells in our hearts and we are called to share and to live that out and set an example for others who are longing to see Christ in this world, who are longing to experience peace. And it's not something that we, we wait for God to do, but in fact, he empowers us to do that. So we have begun, and Father Pedro, myself, Deacon Dennis, during these weeks of Lent are going to talk about our training sessions, our season of training to get into spiritual shape. Because again, it's choices that we make. So during this Lent, we've got lots of opportunities to get into shape. We have on Friday nights during the season of Lent opportunities for the Sacrament of Reconciliation starting at 5.30. And by the looks of it, this past Friday, I was busy the entire hour, which is good. 6.30 Mass, and then after Mass, the Way of the Cross. What a beautiful way to pray during Lent is, is to reflect on Jesus' carrying of the cross, but also how we are invited to carry the cross in our lives, to lay down our lives for others. We have different confession times throughout the season of Lent. We'll be in the bulletin and just take a look and opportunities to receive God's forgiveness. We are going to have three different movie, faith movie nights. These are different than the family movies. Faith, three faith movie nights. One on Saturday, March 3rd at 2 p.m. with the movie The Shack. I don't know if some of you may have read the book or seen the movie. Mary Catherine's going to lead a discussion afterwards about this call and the gift of God's love, even in the midst of challenges. Two other movies about uh, saints of our time. One is called uh, Popiwuszko, and it's about the story of Blessed Jerry or Jerzy Popiwuszko, who was a Polish priest who was uh, killed at the age of 37 as a martyr for the Solidarity Movement. He was uh, killed by the uh, Communist secret police in Poland in 1984. And he was one of the major movers of the Solidarity Movement. And he's a, a, a martyr and a saint of our time. That's going to be shown twice during the month of March. Uh, and another movie is called Life for Life. And that movie is about the story of St. Maximilian Kolbe, who laid down his life at the concentration camp in Auschwitz. And the story about how immense his faith and his love he was willing to sacrifice his life. And that's going to be shown at two different times at the end of uh, March and the middle of April in the Easter season. So those are opportunities. This Tuesday night we have Roman Roadhouse. And Glenn Pearson is going to be our guest speaker. And he's going to talk about the challenges of poverty in our city and how we are called not only to do some nice things but to change the way we deal with this so no one is homeless and no one is hungry anymore. And we can do that. There's a whole bunch of different opportunities, the uh, Way of the Cross, the Chenstohova Way of the Cross on Palm Sunday night. We have a ton of things in the parish, but none of it matters if we don't choose to embrace it. We have our Lent to Remember series, which already started with Thursday morning sessions, but the mor Monday, morning se or Monday night sessions don't start until February 26th. Four gatherings to reflect on what Lent means for us. The first session was wonderful that we had this past Thursday morning. You, if you can't make any of those gatherings, you can do that on form.org on your own. But the choice of getting into shape like the Olympic athletes simply decided that they were going to perform to their best for the sake of the goal of the Olympics. And they sacrificed a lot to be able to do that. We, during the season of Lent, sacrifice and make room and make time and choose the opportunities to draw close to the Lord. 
to dive in, you know, to go out into the deep waters and try something different. If you've never been to Roman Roadhouse, you've never come to Mass on Friday night during Lent, you haven't been on form.org, take a look. We're called to change our ways during the season of Lent to become more like Christ so that we can shine as the sun is shining, how that changes our attitudes. Even, you know, earlier this morning to now, people are much happier coming to Mass today because the sun was out. Mind you, also perish breakfast after Mass, right? It changes, you know, who we are so that the world can change. And the last image I want to share with you is our goal for Easter is to become like this basketball. Isn't that awesome? Not round, because we're sacrificing food, even though it's roll up the rim to win at Tim Hortons. Um, so this basketball. So we, we have this goal not to just get to Lent and celebrate Easter. We want to journey through Lent in this season of training so that at Easter time, we can truly be messengers of the resurrection, that we can be strong in our faith. And I thought about this basketball because I bought this, oh, maybe 15 years ago at Canadian Tire, by the way. Uh, and um, this is a, a unique basketball. It's called the Night Bright Basketball. And the neat thing about this is you place it at any source of light for about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, it will end up glowing. I don't know why you would want to play basketball in the dark, but it, it works. It actually works. I tried this out. You put it out in a period, and then you put it in the dark, and it will radiate. It will glow. And even the slogan, the catch line of this night bright, a ball that isn't afraid of the dark. We want to be those faithful disciples that placing ourselves in the midst of the Son of God, that we receive his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, and be transformed so that when we are sent out, we radiate his light, his love, his mercy, his peace in the world today. That we are so courageous that we're not afraid of the dark. We're not afraid to go into the corners of this world, to the fringes. We're not afraid to go where we're not invited or we're not welcome to offer the joy in the presence and the love of Christ. And hopefully during Lent, we're filled with the Holy Spirit because, of course, this ball, for it to be a really important use in basketball. I was refereeing this past week. I did a junior city final the other day. Uh, the coach uh, actually was actually pleased. He, he said, I only made one mistake during the game. It was a bad call against his team, apparently. I told him I would go to confession. Um, he knows I'm a priest, so he didn't yell at me too much. But the only way a basketball works well is that if there's air in it, because it comes to life when it's filled with air. Well, for us, let us get filled with the Holy Spirit, that we can truly be those disciples and those messengers of the good news. Ethan, as he receives his first Holy Communion, is filled with the Spirit today. Our well uh, high school ministry people who are helping out with the parish breakfast, they are living with the gift of the Spirit as faithful disciples as they help serve along with the Knights of Columbus. The question is, are you ready to get trained? Are you ready to start? Are you ready to get into spiritual shape? The opportunities are before you. On your way out today, there is a prayer card with the, uh, our uh, banner. Father Pedro will show that to you. On the one side is the banner. On the other side is a prayer uh, for discipleship. And then a sheet with our training session opportunities. They're on a special table in the narthex. Pick them up. Make some choices. Biggest one is get into shape so that we can be faithful and loving disciples. No playing with this during Mass, Father. <laughs>